the measure tool is pretty powerful in Creo Parametric, but I want to show you some tips that I've learned over the years. So first off, if you want to access the measurement tool, you go to the analysis tab and then click measure. And this is a command that you might want to add to the quick access toolbar. Just click on the down arrow and choose more commands. And then under the list here, it's a command that's located on the measure tab, excuse me, the analysis tab. And we're going to find the measure command. And then ah, I want the drop, drop down arrow. You add it to the ribbon and then position it where you want it to be on there. Ah, let's put it right about there. And I'll click OK. And that way I have the measure command right from here. And when you click measure, you're going to get this toolbar that opens up. And I want to start off by showing you a config.pro option that I recommend that you use instead. So let's close out of here. I'm going to go to File, Options, Configuration Editor. And I've already got that in my config.pro file. It's called Measure Dialog Expand. And normally I have it set to yes, but for the sake of this demo, I have it starting out with a value of note just to show you the value. And normally I would save the option, but just for the demo, I'm not going to save it at the moment. So now when I click on the measure command, because I set that option for uh, measure dialog expand to yes, it automatically opens this up. And I just feel that it's, it's more convenient for you to use the tool in this manner. And so the reason that they give you that strip is that they intend for you to just select the geometry and based on the geometry that you select, it's going to tell you all the possible measurements. For example, I selected a surface and it's giving me the area, the perimeter and the diameter. And if I select another surface, same thing. If I select an edge, it's going to give me the curve length. So they intend for you to just pick what you want. And similarly, if I hold down the control key and then select another reference, it's going to give me the information for the individual entities like the curve length plus the distances as well. But I want to walk through and show you how to use some of these different options. And so the first one that we'll take a look at is the one for length. And so if you want to measure the length of an edge, you can go ahead and select it. And if you want to chain a bunch of edges, you'll hold down the control key. Oops, looks like I missed one over there. And that way, if I wanted to, I could use this for getting the edge length around this entire surface. Uh, but I'm not going to make all those different picks. And here you see it gives you the individual edges as well as the total curve length. You'll notice that in addition, the primary measurements are going to show up in this note that you get. Besides the length, let's take a look at the next option, which is for distance. And so for distance, I can measure, hey, what's the distance from, say, this surface over here? And I'll hold down the control key and select that surface. And there we get the surfaces. And it says that it's using them as planes. Uh, and we get the distance from one surface to the other if you extended those planes infinitely. Now, one thing that comes up a lot is sometimes people want the projections in X, Y, and Z. So, for example, maybe I'm going to select this vertex over here and hold down the control key and filter to another vertex. I'm just tapping the right mouse button until I get it. And so it's just giving me the straight line distance between those two individual points. If you want the distance in that X, Y, and Z, what you can do is you can click here in the projection field or right mouse click and hold and from the pop-up menu, choose projection. And you can project that distance along a flat surface or an edge or probably what you want is a coordinate system. And when you select a reference coordinate system, that way you'll get the measurements in X, Y, and Z. And related to doing distance measurements, I'm going to show you another configuration option. So let me close out of here and choose File and Options and Configuration Editor. And besides Measure Dialog Expand, which already sets Yes, there's this one called Measure Auto Replace Mode. And I'm going to set that one to Yes as well. And this one can save you some mouse picking. 
So let's click OK. And normally I would save that in my file. And for these measurements, let me hop over to another part that I have open. Actually, not this one. Let me jump back over to the motor assembly and I am going to select this part right here. And from the mini toolbar, let's open up the part. And so if I want to measure the distances, again, you can go to the analysis tab, but since I added to the quick access toolbar, I can select the measure command or use the drop down list. And again, I'm measuring distances. And so I can select one surface. And I want you to notice what happens in the dialog box over here when I hold down the control key and select the second surface. Now I get this blue dot next to the surface over here, meaning that any subsequent picks are going to use that as the second measurement reference. So for example, if I pick this other surface over here, the distance changed from 0.74 to 0.86. And similarly, can move under here, pick this other surface. You'll notice that now the distance increases to 1.57. So in this way, you can use this to just use left mouse clicks without holding down the control key to select the second measurement reference. And this works with uh, distance measurements and area measurements, I believe also length measurements. So that's good. Let's take this opportunity to take a look at some of the other different options that you have in this dialog box. So first off, we could display the results in an information window where you get one of these old style dialog boxes. And from here, you could save as and save this out to a text file if you want. In terms of using the different values that are in here, you can select a value and then right click and use copy. And this is really convenient if you get some weird number and you want to paste it into some other dimension value. Similarly, the value shows up down at the bottom of the screen. You can actually highlight it and use control C and copy that information as well. In the dialog box, also right next to the results section, there is a little options command. And by default, it's using the model units for reporting your measurements. So for example, it's using inches for the different distances, but maybe the model was created in one set of units and based on what I'm doing, I need to report the values in another set of units. Let's click OK. And that way now you see that the value got converted to roughly 19 millimeters instead of the one and change or whatever it was for uh, the pre previous distance value. It was less than one. Uh, let's see, another thing that I want to show, actually, let me go back over to the, oops, wrong button, uh, back to my assembly and take a look at some of the other different measurements. So, again, you can go to the measure drop down list. Let's take a look at angle. And this one, I'll be honest, this one is one that <laughs> could use some work. Okay, so I have an angled surface over here. Let's hold down the control key and select another surface. And you look at those two surfaces and you're like, how the heck is this 24.45 degrees? That doesn't look right at all. And that's because the way that Creo Parametric does angle measurements is that it uses the surface normal vectors and then measures the angle in between them. Most likely what you want to do is click on this main drop down list instead of using the main angle. You probably want the supplement angle. And I would say probably want to ignore the graphics on the computer screen because they are a little confusing. But now it shows me that the angle between those two surfaces is 155 degrees and some change. And that looks right. I mean, I can look at those two surfaces and say, yeah, they're, they're clearly more than 90 and less than 180. I can even eyeball and say that, tell that they're less, they're greater than 135 degrees. So again, usually when you're doing an angle measurement, you're going to want to change to the supplement. And I've requested to PTC that they make a config.pro option where the supplement is the default angle that you can get. All right, next up on the list, diameter dimensions. And again, you can pick a cylindrical surface and it's going to give you both the diameter and the radius. And at this point, I wanna show you the effect of using the feature tab. The feature tab allows you to create 
this measurement as a feature. Let me go and collapse my model tree so you can see, so I can scroll down to the bottom a little easier. You can create the val this measurement as a feature in the model, and this will be a parameter in the feature. So, for example, let's click on the save, and here it says make feature, and I'm going to call this the shaft diameter because that's what it is. And now if you take a look in the model tree, I've got a what's called a datum analysis feature, and that measures that diameter and stores it, uh, the diameter value, and there are also parameter for the radius value. And the interesting thing about this, this functionality used to be available only in the behavioral modeling extension, BMX, but for some reason, a few versions ago, PTC made this just part of the core functionality. If you do have BMX, you have the ability to create datum geometry based on your different measurements. But with the standard license, you can create features based off of your measurements and create the parameters in here. And I'm going to close this for a second and just show you that you can go to the model tree and I can add a column and change the drop down list to feature parameters and I happen to notice that the name of the parameter was diameter and I can add it as a column and click OK and there you can see the diameter measurement and that way if I ever change that or any other similar measurement of that name it'll be reported in my model tree so just a little trick that you can use for the next measurement type for area uh, I'm going to hop over to a, another part model. So let's go to this wing part over here. I'm going to turn on my datum plane visibility because I'm going to use one of these planes in a second. And so if we go to the measurement tool and I'm going to measure an area, you could select multiple different entities. So for example, I'm holding down the control key so I can get those surfaces and so that way for this wing I have the total surface area uh, that would be interacting in a flight path but here's a, another thing uh, to be aware of you can also project the area on some reference and so let me remove all and for your reference, you could select, say, the wing part itself, the entire wing, and then click in the projection field or right mouse click and hold and choose projection and then project it on some uh, datum plane. So, for example, let me go and change this value over here. Right now it's in millimeters, which is really hard for me to think in because this wing is so big. Let me click meters. Okay, so the area of this wing part is 133 square meters but the projected area is roughly 10 percent of that and the reason why projected area is important if you're doing aerodynamics and you're studying wings then the drag force and the lift force are a function of the projected area based on the direction that the wing is traveling. So that's the reason why you would might want to use the projected area instead of the uh, just the total area that you compute. All right, next up on the list, we'll take a look at volume. And for that one, I am going to switch to a different window. And you'll notice conveniently that I already have a datum plane in my model called volume that I'm going to use in a second. So again, if you don't have the command in your quick access toolbar, we can choose volume. And by default, it's giving me the volume of the entire part. And I can see that in this case here, my units are not convenient for me for volume. Let's go and change this. I know I'm jumping back and forth between uh, metric and English. Uh, I hope you can think that way. Uh, so anyhow, right now my volume is about nine cubic inches, but you could also measure the one-sided volume, and, and that's the volume of the part on one side or the other side of a datum plane. And to do that, you can click in the plane collector. Oops, I thought that was available from right mouse button. It was not. Uh, and let's go and click my volume datum plane. 
And so right now, it is giving me the volume. I hope you can see this. There is a green arrow pointing up. If you hit the flip button, we can get the volume on the other side of the datum plane. All right, and the last one that I will mention in here is the transform tool. And for that one, let me hop back over to my assembly. And for this one, let me turn off my datum plane visibility. I'm going to turn on my coordinate system display. And I'll be honest, in the real world, I've never had to transform coordinate systems. There's a trick to get a, an offset coordinate system located in a model. I'll do that in a tip or trick video at some point. But if you need to get the transform of a coordinate system, you can click on transform. And one thing I recommend that you do is that you use your selection filter. Uh, this is very convenient all the time, uh, whether you're trying to limit your selection to coordinate systems or if you're doing other different types of measurements like distances, uh, you could change this to surface or vertex as necessary. Uh, and also if you're trying to select coordinate systems, I highly recommend that you go to the view tab and turn on the display of your coordinate systems tags. It'll make it much easier to pick the coordinate systems. And so we're going to pick one coordinate system and then hold down the control key and select a second coordinate system. And inside of the dialog box, you're going to get this matrix of values and you might be like, what the heck am I getting here? And this is a little confusing. The first column will give you the direction of the uh, x-axis relative to your first coordinate system. So it's saying that the x-axis of the second coordinate system is in the negative y direction of the uh, primary coordinate system. The second column is going to give you essentially the direction of the y-axis uh, it's, it's vector projected in the XY plane of the first coordinate system. Again, this is a little confusing. Uh, so it gives us, hey, the uh, let's see, the Y direction is of the second coordinate system is basically in the Z direction of my first coordinate system. This third column is technically meaningless because the z-axis of the coordinate system over here is determined by the right-hand rule. And the last column gives you the transformation of the origin uh, relative to one another. So in this case here, we see that th it's negative 6 units in the x-direction, and they have the same y-coordinate. Uh, and then it is 6.9 units over in the positive Z to relative to the first coordinate system. So again, hey, I hope you have you might be able to use a transform one day. You can actually save this out to a file and use it to define a new coordinate system if, if necessary. But that is the transform tool. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video on how to use the different measure commands. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.